how long does it last you? Does it last you enough for the whole day? Or how many it cars? It does, but what I like to tell everybody, it varies on... Yo, did it, did it just die? I think so. What's up guys, it's your boy Hector over here at H2O Auto Detail Supplies. Today we're gonna review this mobile detailing setup, but it's not on your average setup. It's not on a van, it's on a perfect truck like this and it's enclosed, you will never be able to tell that there is a detailing setup in there besides the magnet stickers, but you can take those off whenever you can. But we're gonna go ahead and speak with the owner, see exactly how the setup works for him, and maybe inspire you guys to start detailing out of your own truck. We're here with Matthew from Luxury Touch Detail. He's here with this brand new truck. Can you give us a little explanation of what truck it is? Yeah, so this is a 2011 Tacoma uh, access cab with a six foot bed. And this truck, did you get it specifically for detailing or do you just like the truck? And you uh, like it was a little bit of both. I kind of liked the truck and I also thought if I get a truck, I could also start my own detailing business. So it worked out perfect. How old are you? I'm um, 20 years old. 20 years old. How long you been detailing for? For about two years now. For two years? Mm -hmm. How's it been? Like a rocky star or is it? Uh, it's like... at the beginning, you know, a little slow, just trying to build your clientele. But once you get going, I mean, there's no stopping from there. What do you do right now? Like, are you doing uh, detailing? Or are you doing polishes a lot more? Or what's like a day, day in the life look like for you? I uh, say day in the life looks for me, it looks for like a lot of interior details, also complete details, and every now and then a few ceramic coatings a month. Then, then what's like the, what's like the worst job you ever came across? Mm, probably this really trash minivan. <laughs> it had like kids, fries everywhere, ketchup packets, it's just a mess. I always love those vans because I just, when I'm hungry, I get a couple fries from there too. <laughs> but let's get straight into it. Can you show us a little bit of what you have and why did you go with a, a top onto the truck? Because you uh, could easily get like a setup with like a bunch of stuff sticking out. Yeah, so the reason I went for the, the bed cover is because I don't have another car yet, so I feel like it's perfect. Uh, it's like, I call it the sleeper build. So if once I take off the magnets, it just looks like an ordinary truck and people don't even know I detail. So mm -hmm. it's like a two-in-one. And then with the, with, the, with the bed cover, how much was the bed cover? Uh, the bed cover, I think it ran about $700. So it's not too much. Okay. So what do, you, what, what do we have to do to show it? Just, just pop it open like that. Oh, 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 oh. Dude, if you look at this thing, super organized. I love how, how OCD you have it. Man, you're killing it. Can you explain to us what you have, what's in exactly inside of here? Yeah, so starting from the back, we have a, a 65 gallon low profile water tank, the EcoFlow Delta Pro Max. Uh, we have the Husky air compressor, a Vac Master vacuum, and then basically all my retractable reels except the vacuum, which is the water, water hose, air hose, electrical, and then a 30 foot vacuum hose. This is unique. I haven't seen this one. This is one I haven't seen. And this is the hose that came with the reel? Yes. Oh, nice. That's awesome. That's something that we need to start carrying as well. And then the retractable reels, 50 foot is enough for you? Uh, 50 foot to me works totally fine. Uh -huh. I haven't had any issues with it so far. And then for the pressure washer, you have an electric pressure washer right over here. Yeah, so for the pressure washer, we have the Krenzel 1622S. Mm -hmm. And the only thing is I just plastic dip the cover black. That's why it looks a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And you're keeping it the same. It looks like you have the red, the red and black, red yeah, and black look. Except the vacuum reel. I'm working on that next. We'll get that powder coated. We need to get that powder coated. Yeah. And then that's new, the fully electric generator. Yeah. No gas anymore. Mm -mm, no gas. So you literally, you don't have to carry any gas in your, no. in your truck. And then this, you could also charge it with the Tesla supercharger. Uh, just a regular wall outlet, and you could even charge it with solar panels as well. How much does that one, that one run you? This, it varies on where you buy it, but roughly anywhere from $3,000 to $3,500 for this inverter right here. So we have $3,000 right there. Tank, how much does tank, tank cost you? Uh, I think $300 or $350. $350. Krenzo, how much does Krenzo cost you? $1,200. $1,200. Reels? <clears throat> Both those reels were like a hundred and then that one was converted to pressure washer. So just plus Changing. the hose and the fittings. 
changing that. Yeah. So it's like you could say 200. Yeah. 300. 300. Uh -huh. And then your electric. The electric cocktail was 500. And then the cocktail vacuum was 400. 400. Compressor? Compressor was, I believe, 260. And the vacuum was like 80 bucks on sale. 80 bucks on sale. And then what are we at on the on the floor? On the floor like we, have, those. we have the diamond plate powder coated in black. And everything's just bolted down so everything's secure. Nothing's gonna be moving around when you're driving or hit any speed bumps. So you'll be all set. So how much total did, did we say? I, I stopped counting because you used a bunch of hundreds. <laughs> uh, rough estimate with everything installed and labor, it was around $7,500. 75, that's including the gen, that's the gen include, Yeah, that's including the, the inverter right here. But the setup itself, you would say it only costs about? Uh, roughly around 5,000. 5,000? That's good. That's good. Five thousand. Start your own business mm -hmm. in a setup like this. And what what made you want to invest? Um, like, obviously, that's a lot of money. But what made you want to invest into your detailing business like that? Did you start off right off the bat like this, or did you work on to it? Uh, so right off the bat, I didn't have this. I kind of had like a Mickey Mouse setup, just everything thrown in the back of the truck, just cables, wires everywhere. So I thought if I invested, uh, it would be more efficient and also save time, mm -hmm. which would help me make more money as well. Did it do that? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> do it, and to be quite honest, I give you props. I've seen you come in and out of H2O. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember we first started with the setup where you see everything, big tank, uh, f frames and reels yeah, everywhere. Yeah. And it looked organized too. I love the way you had that one. Mm -hmm. But I really like the way how this is probably like your version four. I think this is your version four. Cause four, four or five. Somewhere. Version version two was the H201 with the frame and everything. Mm -hmm. And then version three, you went back to low profile. Yeah. But then you were still trying to figure out the reels. Mm -hmm. And then version four, you had two generators at once. Yeah. And then this is version five when now you figured out that I'm just gonna spend the big bucks and get the full electric yeah. generator. But my question is, I've done a setup with that generator, but how long does it last you? Does it last you enough for the whole day or how many it cars? It does, but what I like to tell everybody, it varies on what type of details you're doing and then also the equipment you have because every, uh, every piece of equipment that you have takes a different amount of wattage. Uh -huh. So, but if you're a person that does a lot of washes or like maintenance, you can easily get six, seven cars out of the inverter right here. That's more than... So I would say that's more than enough. Yeah. And then if the battery is low, take a quick lunch break, go to the Tesla supercharger, and I think you could charge it in an hour and a half or less. In an hour and a half. So it's like perfect. Yeah. Damn. Because over here in California, uh, we are being regulated even more. It's always been like that. But I know generators, they're not selling anymore. Gas pressure washers, I don't think they want to sell them anymore. Mm -hmm. So soon enough, this is going to be your future of going all electric and by any means i think it looks great no noise so it's going to be even better when you go to residential uh, mm -hmm. places or even buildings and that's definitely something that you guys consider and it's a lot of value that you guys are seeing here and i just want to ask the right questions for anyone that's looking to get a setup with an electric generator so right after you you charge it so you can you charge it at home yeah you could plug it into any watt regular outlet so you could pretty much charge it anywhere so how long does it take you to charge it over uh, so there's two different modes on the generator there's actually a fast charging mode and a slow charging mode on the fast charging mode uh if you're like at 40 percent you'll charge it in two hours and mm -hmm. then if you're completely dead i believe it's three to four hours so it's still not too bad of a wait time and then they also have the slow charging mode that way you don't like overheat the battery if you're using it a lot so uh -huh. you could opt to that like Let's say you're done for the day, you could just put it on slow charging. That way when you wake up in the morning, uh -huh. you'll be on a full charge. And it's, it's like charging your iPhone at night when you go to bed. Exactly. Okay, that's perfect. Do you have that one bolted down or you just have this it? This one's actually not bolted down, but it's pretty heavy, so yeah, it doesn't I remember, that much. I remember when, when we installed it in there, I was like, dude, it's small, but this shit's fucking, yeah. it's pretty heavy. It's like, I think it's 90 pounds or so. Yeah, 90 or 100 pounds, something like that. Yeah, so can we actually see you using the setup on a car? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the first thing I do is I usually have this little remote right, right here on the key holder. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take off the remote and basically with this remote, I can turn all my equipment on. I don't got to touch the generator or any of my machines. 
So literally just with the push of these three buttons, I'll power everything. So when I first wanna wash a car, I'll just pull out my hose, to whatever, how many feet I need it. And then from there, I'll just push the button on the control and my pressure washer is good to go. It just needs a prime right now, but after that, we're all set. You see, every time they catch me, just wanna film some videos, then I somehow end up washing the car. Well, can't complain. That's what we do, detail. So we saw how the setup works. We saw that it really does, and we put it to the test. Tried out the electric, tried out the vacuum, and the pressure washer. We ended up finding out that we're able to run two things on one power source, which is a great plus. Yes, you are spending almost two times more than your regular generator, but if you really put the longevity and yet we still don't know everything about using all the electric equipment i'd say soon enough in the near future this stuff is going to be to a t and you will see this on everybody's setup so why not invest now then be the last one in the race but of course i appreciate you showing us your setup and hopefully this inspires anyone to start their own mobile detailing journey within your own truck or even just purchase a truck and you can see exactly how badass of a setup we could get done with having a person like him and an H2O uh, being there to make this stuff happen. But I appreciate you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Do you have any piece of advice like for anybody wanting to start or anybody that's in the detailing game right now? Uh, I would say for anybody starting, just uh, don't give up or listen to what anybody says. If you really feel passionate about it, just go ahead and make that jump. Of course. Thank you guys. Stay tuned. Like and subscribe.